two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Hey, what's on tap podcast? And we are here for our sixth anniversary. Sixth anniversary. Jesus Christ, six years. I cannot believe this would be going on this long. I have not been apart for six years, but I have been apart for more than 50% of all episodes. You have to say three years almost at this point. Yay! So we are here at uh, what actually turns out to be our annual event, which coincides with the Zwanza release. Yes. And uh, also this year coincides with the Blue Bauer release. Cantillon for- Blue Bauer yep. released once a year. And it all coincides, and we are at Ameo Brygghus, outside of Kastrup, Copenhagen Airport. We are in the we're in industrial area right now. Oh yeah, yeah, super, super, super industrial area. There's like no reason you would ever come out here unless you were lost or you had a delivery to make exactly. or, or pick up. Um, so Amager is uh, Amaya, Amaga, how are you, yeah, how yeah. Are you pronounce it? Amager is a um, very classic Danish brewery. And they just happen to be beside uh, Dukleriget or Drik, Drik Beer, which is the uh, the web shop that they own, which is owned yes. by Jeppe, who owns uh, Evil Twin. And so what happened was he sold um, Himmeriget last year and basically raided their cellar. <laughs> and so now he's selling all of those beers and he's selling like rare uh, cantillons or hard to get cantillons. Um, just yeah. for people, people to drink and enjoy. And so we have been enjoying our um, bottle shares as many people are bringing out many bottles of rare and exotic things to drink and enjoy. And we are just having a grand old time. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I, yeah. I've, I've stood in a, a long, long line to get a very few amount of number of uh, Drew Fontaine and beers that match my, like the gaps in my cellar. Yeah, because Himmerigit has always had them for for sale, drink in, but extremely expensive as well. They're expensive here as well. Well, very true. They are not cheap, but I think they're a little cheaper than maybe they were to drink in at Himmerigit. They're actually not. No, they not. Oh. So, okay, so so uh, to anyone listening, the event is already over, so you won't benefit from this. But they're doing a Dutch auction. Mm-hmm. They're starting at a high price. And then every two hours, the price decreases and it ends up in the end at a 50% mm-hmm. price. They want everything to go. But I didn't want to l- lose the chance to buy these specific right, bottles. Right, right. Well, so I bought they, them at the, mo- the the maximum price. Right, because they maybe have 10, 10 of each, which is yeah, not a lot. And we're looking at probably about 400 people here yeah. at most. Um, so while it's not like completely packed in, it's pretty tight uh, in a lot of ways. Exactly. But I also think that the number of people that are willing to buy those beers are kind of low. They're going to have a lot of stock left is all I'm saying. Um, and so what we've done is we went in, or I went in, and I bought a couple of the taps. So we have a Camarice. We have a Cantillon Camarice yes. 2021 yes. and a Cantillon Magic Lambic 2021. Yes. Uh, Stefan did really well because it's it's absolute anarchy close to the tap. It yeah. is. So, so what I did was I skipped in line. <gasps> I, um, no. Well, I finagled my way in by offering beers to people, <laughs> which was a, a Degard uh, peach uh, edition, which is very close to a Fafoon. That Honestly, is smart. it might even be better than a Fafoon. Um, <gasps> and so we, uh, and so I was able to kind of like just get in line and you know finagle my way in to to the right to the front so it was quite nice i didn't have to wait in line but the line is only like maybe 20 people deep it's not very very deep um so th- this goes on until 10 o'clock at night at, at nine tonight they're going to release the zwanza which is a um citrus uh cantillon edition apparently in the past it was extremely volatile and ah. blew up, Ooh. and that's why they have not done uh, these uh, citrus-based um, beers for quite a long time. Wow. So uh, this is the first time they're, they're doing this in like 20, 30 years, something like that. But but we, we don't have that right now, and no. we don't know if we're going to get it later. But these two beers, the Camarese and the Magic Lambic, they're actually quite nice. They're both super clear red uh, I mean, these are just straight up, just amazing Cantillon beers. Uh, really, really great. But that's not what I feel like we're here for today. Even we're though not? we're having, we're enjoying oh. great beers. We're enjoying a annual uh, respite of talking about 
like the past year and what we've enjoyed and what we want to bring new to to the show. Wow, I didn't prepare at all for you this. You know what? That's okay. Um, <laughs> because this is our sixth anniversary. I, I will say the past year, because of COVID, we've done a lot of uh, bottle reviews. We haven't been able to do as many interviews or go to as many uh, festivals as we have in the past. But I feel that uh, 2022 is going to be a whole new year with a whole new possibilities. I'm really looking forward to next year and uh, bringing a lot of new excitement and changes to the show. Uh, and, and, you know, just looking at what are the possibilities we can do going forward. I feel the same. Uh, we have a few bars in Malmo that we now need to review because yeah. they've either opened up or they've changed in some in some way that makes them uh, uh, relevant to re-review. Yeah, yeah, and even in Copenhagen, um, and since him and Riga sold, I think we should definitely That's, revisit that. Yeah, after after a bar is sold, it basically becomes a new bar. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you just lose all of the contacts, all of the connections. Uh, when you go with someone that's the uh, evil stepbrother of McKellar yeah, yeah. to, I don't know who owns it now. 14, the, the people behind 1420 oh, people behind own uh, Himariga. I mean, it's still good, but they're mostly European connections and not so much uh, uh, American connections. Exactly. Which is where... I think Kimmeriga really excelled was their American connections. Yes. So. And the thing about today, this event that we are at now, is that they're selling a lot of vintage beers that came from Himmerigat's cellar. Mm -hmm. They're not there anymore. Himmeri the um, evil twin people, the Drickerigat people, they emptied that cellar and are now selling it. They they rated it like a, the, like a 1980s Like uh, the lost ark of through. the covenant. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just robbed it blind. So I think... I mean, I haven't been to Himmerigat since it's sold, um, so I don't know what their bottle situation is now. I don't know. But I imagine that is a, a pamphlet, not a <laughs> Possibly. Not, not a very deep book like Who they knows? had before. We'll have to go there and review it for the show. Definitely, definitely. So what have you thought about the past year? Have you, like with COVID and with the limitations that we had, how are you feeling about everything? Limitations on bar life has been uh, uh, sad. A lot of bars haven't had mm -hmm. a rotation of, ta uh, of beers on tap. We, you and I, and our, our beer friends, we've held the flag really high. We've held some, some COVID-safe uh, tastings where we, we've had amazing beers. Yeah. I, personally, have gotten access to a lot of rare Drifontainen beers that I've gotten shipped to my, my house, and usually they were only available at the actual brewery. Yeah, I, I would say that for all the downsides of the past year, the real upside has been the amazing availability of things that were just completely forbidden before, yeah. like uh, Cantillon and, and Dre Fontenin and other places have just really opened up their cellars because they're kind of like, we can't sit on this shit. No one's coming here anymore. We can't exactly. rely on those situations. We've got to like sell this stuff. So there's been a huge push into the market of stuff that just previously was like uh, whales or just like things that are whispered of in hidden rooms that no one was able actually to ever get. Definitely. Um, so I think we've been really, really lucky in that in that uh, in that way. And we've seen some amazing releases uh, from the U.S. into here. I mean, uh, Monkish and uh, other half and uh, uh, yeah, lots like, of uh, answer the answer and some other places have just been really. Um, releasing a lot of stuff that we've never, ever, ever seen before. Um, so beer-wise, I mean, the past year has been a real boon uh, to get stuff in. And I think that we've been able to showcase a lot of interesting, unique, uh, unusual beers on the show in the past year that normally we would never have been able to get access to before. Exactly. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, but next year, I feel like we need to do more. We got. We got to. We got to expand more. We got to do more. We got to be a little more creative. We got to get out there and, and do more kind of weird, and wacky stuff. Yeah. It so, cheers to being more creative. Oh, 100%. Um, so, let's just take a moment. Let's uh, let's talk about the two beers we have in our glasses here. So both are uh, super red. I don't actually know what Camarys is. Is it grape beer? It's I'm, a great. It's a grape based beer. Uh, basically, they call it the Camarys grape. Whereas the Magic Lambic is a blueberry, blackberry, like raspberry, vanilla. Yeah, there's basically something. no vanilla. Yeah, yes. 
Oh, well, maybe we have the wrong beers. <laughs> I, I'm now holding Camarillo, and you're holding Magic Lambic. Magic Lambic definitely has vanilla in it. You can definitely taste yeah. that. And they're both um, really so, good. Soon we need to go back to our uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, our friends seem to have abandoned all of our stuff. Oh, no. Um, and I'm actually freaking out. Well, then let's, um, let's just wrap this up then. I think, um, Martin, it's been a great year. I've really enjoyed... Um, podcasting you with you. Are, you are the best co-host. Oh, uh, thank you so much. You're the best co-host. Uh, and uh, we're not going to go make out and have uh, a lot of beer sex uh, through some hops and, and sheets and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so until next time. Keep drinking, you dum-dums. Forever and ever. Bye.